Yeah, basically, uh, tonight I'm going to tell you a story, if that's okay. Um, and it's a true story, don't worry. Uh, basically, a few weeks ago, I was about three hours into a six-hour car drive, and I fucking hate driving it, okay? So, like, everyone, I was playing little games with myself in the car, you know what I mean? Like, counting all the red cars. Um, or trying to guess which of the vans on the road is filled with bodies. Um, or sometimes I like to uh, pretend I'm posting my own radio show, uh, Car FM, where it's always drive time. Um, and, uh, but I was tired, I was on my own, and I was just tired and pissed off. And then I saw a sign. It said, Britain's first city centre IKEA, Coventry, two miles. And I thought, excellent, this sign is a sign. You know, I, I just wanted to kind of get out of the car, kind of stretch my legs slightly, and where better to do that than Ikea? I mean, it's, it's like a nice house that goes on forever. <laughs> but it was weird, I, I pushed on in my little car, but the closer I got to it, I couldn't find the entrance to Ikea. I ended up just kind of driving round and round Coventry for about half an hour. It was really annoying, but it was really creepy, because I didn't see a single person in the entire time. The whole place was deserted. Coventry was a ghost town. And my sat-nav was no help whatsoever. It kept on trying to direct me to Gothenburg, uh, home of Swedish Batman. <laughs> I deserve more. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, and, and so I was driving around for ages, and then I suddenly, I thought I'd found the entrance, and I turned a corner, and I found the road blocked. And so I got out of my car and I looked at what was blocking the road and it was futons. About seven different futons, different colours as well, all piled up in the middle of the road. And I got out of my car and I looked at them. And then I suddenly heard footsteps behind me and then the thwack of catalogue on skull. And when I woke up, I was in a basement. And I was naked and covered in sawdust, which was all over the floor. I didn't know what was going on, but just looking around, I suddenly realised that I was in some kind of... some kind of book cage. It's a cage made out of bookcases. It's exactly what it sounds like. Book cage. I was in a book cage. And I didn't know what was going on, but I could hear voices, and so I shouted, what's, what's happening here? And then the man in the next cell peered through the, the cracks in the plywood. And he said, don't you know? You were snatched up by the patrols. You were out after I cared for you. <laughs> and he gave me a pitying smile and he said, I'm Jason. Let me explain. He told me that the IKEA had opened 157 days ago. He said for the first few weeks it was, it was good, just convenient. You know, if you wanted an uplighter in the shape of a massive light bulb, you could just get one. Okay, you could just go and pick it up. No, 40 pound delivery fee, no having to wait in between the hours of eight and half past five. It's what they'd always promised, it was freedom. But then people started to get greedy. He shuddered at the memory, he said, a fever started to spread, infecting everyone, no one was safe. People started spending more and more time in Ikea. I mean, why would you leave? They've got beds there. <laughs> But the city gradually began to fall apart. People stopped showing up for work. One by one, the shops started to close. The lights started to go out. Except in Ikea. He told me that because they were the only ones left with any real money, the staff of Ikea gradually began to take over, becoming overlords of the city. He said they banned jazz. He said he particularly liked jazz. He said they banned jazz! <laughs> And as he said that, a Swedish meatball blew across the floor. Like, 